the AMD Radeon W7800. I promise you this is not going to be like any kind of review that you've seen before because I bought this card with my own money because I actually have a need for it because it's the only card that has the full fat DisplayPort 2.1 implementation. Wait a minute, I thought AMD Radeon gaming cards had DisplayPort 2.1. Um, yes and no. It's more complicated than that. Let's take a closer look. Alright, first up, take a look at this card. This is the AMD Radeon Pro W7800. Believe it or not, AMD actually has a lot of traction in the enterprise with enterprise stuff. I know we all hear about NVIDIA and AI and everything AI. You can actually run Rockham 6.1.3. It is professionally supported even under Linux with the Pro Radeon driver. Works great on this card. 32 gigs of VRAM too. And $2,000, $2,200 is kind of a steal for what you've got here. But for me, what I need is DisplayPort 2.1. And that story starts with the rear connection on the card. But we're not there yet. Let's take a look at the software stack. The graphics compute die is TSMC 5 nanometer, and the memory controller dies are TSMC 6 nanometer, managing the best of both worlds. It's a chiplet GPU. We know that from RDNA 3 because of the gaming GPUs, but this is not a gaming GPU. It has 140 AI accelerators, 70 Ray accelerators, and 4880 stream processors and 70 compute units. Now the connectors that I talked about are four DisplayPort 2.1 54 gigabit and one mini DisplayPort 2.1 that's the 80 gigabit standard. There's a single 80 gigabit and why mini DisplayPort? Signal integrity, which is why we have our total phase signal integrity tester. Don't worry, we'll get there. On board you've got hardware encoder decoder support for AV1 one encoder for AV1 and one decoder for AV1, two encoders and decoders for H.265 and two encoder decoders for H.264. So all the video encoding decoding you want to do right on board. If you're a developer, you should really check out the, the uh, Pro Render SDK. You may be able to add Pro Render support to your software stack with surprisingly little effort, get a lot done, and make this the backbone of your uh, product solution. This is the thing that a lot of people don't realize. AMD is already the de facto standard in a lot of industries. The medical industry, for example. Uh, Barco radiology displays incorporate AMD products in their solutions. And the reason I know that is from working on the KVM because I've been developing a special software stack just to support the Barco X-ray display ecosystem. And you better believe that DisplayPort 2.0, 2.1, high-end medical imaging displays, there's a lot of wacky stuff going on over there that I would like to be able to support with multi-display display switcher things, which I'm sure that a lot of radiology associations will be very interested in. Store.level1text.com. If you're not a medical imaging display, there's also SolidWorks, Emotion, Autodesk 3D Studio Max, Blender, Houdini, Autodesk Inventor, Autodesk Maya, and the Unreal Engine. 32 gigs of GDDR6 makes certain Unreal Engine tasks run like butter when you're a developer. So, neat. AMD also has some interesting case studies on their website with their pro software and how all that works. Who knows? Maybe we'll get there someday with the KVMs and medical imaging because that is a really interesting success story. You know they can 3D print teeth now? Well, it's not 3D printing so much as it's a CNC type process, but they can go in and they can scan your mouth and then print a tooth to fit your mouth exactly, or print a crown or a bridge or whatever. And a lot of the time, this is what's doing the calculations to do that in real time so that the dentist can do like a 3D x-ray kind of a deal, load it into the computer, let the computer make a tooth for you or make a bridge for you, and then print it on the printer. It's like lens crafters, except for your teeth. Anywho, let's talk about that DisplayPort 2.1 connector and bit rates and everything else. So it turns out that the physical DisplayPort connector that has carried us from DisplayPort 1.0 to 1.1 to 1.1a to 2.0 and 2.1, uh, not fabulous for these higher bit rates. And it's because the physical connector has a lot of reflections and everything else in it. Haven't you wondered why you haven't seen a USB Type-B 10 gigabit connector? It's because that connector is very hard to achieve 10 gigabit signaling rates. And it's because the physical shape of the connector and the metal and everything else just isn't suited for signaling rates that high. And so I have our total phase cable tester here that can give us a little bit more insight on that. So for our cable testing profiles, we can choose a couple of different bit rates. 
And there are some cables that I have here where I can do testing at 8.1 gigabit, that's the HBR3 bitrate, that is technically DisplayPort 1.4, but I can also do testing at 10 gigabit, which is more akin to what you see on DisplayPort cables that'll, that are also hybrid with USB-C. And you can have a cable that works great at the 10 gigabit rate, but does not work well or will not pass, it fails its, its certification, at 8.1 gigabit. You can also get DisplayPort cables that work really well for the higher bit rates, but then will fail at the lowest possible bit rates. And it's just because you run into things like the length of the wire matters for the signaling rate, or which pair of wires is close to which other pair of wires in the, in, in the actual cable. What's the uh, diameter of the copper in the conductor? That also matters. Is there a source of external interference? Those OG MacBook power bricks throw off. I'm surprised that the FCC certified those because if you have one of the old MacBook Air power bricks next to a DisplayPort cable, your display will blink out every now and then. It'll just turn black. And that's because it's a digital signal. And when there's too much noise in the digital signal, it's not able to be decrypted because yes, there has to be significant encryption between your display and your GPU because you're a filthy pirate and you might steal media. And when that encryption fails to decrypt, you just get a black screen. If it's borderline, you'll get RGB snow. But if it's bad, you'll get a black screen. But what does that actually look like when we test it? Well, I've got a test here where the total phase cable tester says that this cable tests, but this is one of the ones where if you try it a couple of times, it does not actually, it does not actually pass. And this is what the eye diagram looks like. This type of diagram lets you visually see a test signal on the wire, or at least what it looks like. And the more separation there is between the black and red areas, the higher the signal integrity is. And so this passes, but just barely. And so if there's any external interference, or you move a power brick a little closer, or your cell phone goes off, it's probably going to push the signal just a little bit out of spec, and then you'll get that black screen, and then that, that doesn't work. So the problem with DisplayPort 2.1 at the 80 gigabit signaling rate is that the physical DisplayPort connector that we've come to know and love has a lot of reflections and harmonics for this type of signal. And so they're retooling the interface. And many DisplayPort 2.1, which is the same physical connector as like Thunderbolt 2, those connectors are getting re-engineered to better support the 80 gigabit signaling rate. And this card features one of those DisplayPort 2.1 connectors that supports the 80 gigabit signaling rate. And that is the connector that you're gonna need to use if you wanna do 120 frames per second at 12K. 120 frames per second at 12K, that sounds impossible. It is with display stream compression. This is the other kind of lie that's going on right now. There are certain LG displays that say that they are DisplayPort 2.1. When in fact, really, they're DisplayPort 1.4 with display stream compression. If you look at the DisplayPort 1.4 specifications, the absolute maximum resolution and refresh rate for that bitrate is 4K 120 hertz. But there are gaming monitors that can do 4K 144 hertz. There's two ways, to, two ways, well, three ways to achieve that. You can overclock. That's not fabulous. Not everything supports overclocking. Let's pretend that doesn't exist. The second thing you can do is do a lower color depth. So you give up some of your color depth, your color fidelity, but you can get some more frames in there in the trade-off. Nobody likes that. It's, it's, it, you'll see it and you won't like it. And then there's display stream compression. You give up nothing. It is a visually lossless compression scheme. It actually has a couple of different levels, which are varyingly visually lossless, like visually lossless and then actually visually lossless. But for 4K 144 Hertz, visually lossless. And with display stream compression, everything is great. The problem is not every operating system, not every compute device, not every GPU truly supports display stream compression. GTX 1080s, for example, they barely support DisplayPort 1.4. They actually needed a firmware update, an optional firmware update that's buried on NVIDIA's website to properly support DisplayPort 1.4. So DisplayPort 2.1 monitors may actually be DisplayPort 1.4, but with the display stream compression as a requirement in the monitor, even though display stream compression support in a DisplayPort 1.4 scenario is optional. But the reality is pretty much every DisplayPort 1.4 implementation these days does actually support display stream compression, which is awesome. So that brings us back to this card. It has three DisplayPort full-size connectors, and those do support DisplayPort 2.1, but at the 54 gigabit 
signaling rate. This is like 37 point something for DisplayPort 1.4, and then the 10 gigabit signaling rate that the total phase tester can test is 40 gigabit. That's not official, that's just like the overclocking DisplayPort 1.4. Like it's, it can do it, but it's not fabulous to try to build KVMs around that and make sure that you have good support. Mostly it's there for testing harmonics and if you have weird signal reflections and you get into one of those things where it's like, well, this cable does test fine at 10 gigabit, but it doesn't work right at 8.1 gigabit. Now, that's 8.1 gigabit per channel, by the way. In case I didn't mention that, DisplayPort has four channels. And so 8.1 times 8.1 times 8.1 or 8.1. 8.1 plus 8.1 plus 8.1 plus 8.1. That's your DisplayPort 1.4 official bandwidth, but four channels at 10 gigabit, 40 gigabit. That sounds familiar. That sounds like Thunderbolt. Ah, now you're thinking. And so the reason I have this is to work on DisplayPort 2.1 implementation in a KVM type scenario, and especially also medical imaging displays, because that's a thing. We also have the unfortunate situation of having this eye diagram be the first pair on the cable. Um, some monitors don't actually use all four pairs. Some, some monitors will run just fine. You actually will see things, this is really true of Amazon cables, where the cable will pass, but when you look at the eye diagram, the first two pair on the cable are really good, and the second two look like this. Even though technically that passes, that cable is kind of a dodgy cable, because again, if you try to use it through a KVM, or you try to use it with an extender, or you try to use it with anything, any little thing is just going to shove this signal into the unacceptable range for a digital signal. Oh, since I have it, I'll also throw in there that sometimes you get a cable that has a pin 20 connected. Pin 20 is not supposed to be connected in a cable. And I love that this cable tester will test everything. This cable looks reasonable. This last pair is maybe a little, eh. But this cable fails because it actually has pin 20. Again, this is just Amazon swill. If the Amazon name is just random, like it sounds like something an AI would come up with where it's just, let's put the vowels and consonants together in a new word that didn't exist before. It's probably one of these cables. And so here's the bad news about that DisplayPort 2.1 mini DisplayPort connector. All of the cables and other connectors and anything that you might get to go from mini DisplayPort 2.1 to full size DisplayPort, like if you were gonna hook it up to a full size DisplayPort 2.1 50 gigabit monitor, are terrible. So don't be tempted to do that. Even though that is the best connector for DisplayPort 2.1 80 gigabit, don't use it unless you actually have an 80 gigabit DisplayPort monitor, which will probably also have a mini DisplayPort thing and probably comes with a mini DisplayPort cable, which is probably better than any other mini DisplayPort cable you can buy. Almost all of the mini DisplayPort cables that exist right now are either recycled Thunderbolt 2 cables or DisplayPort 1.2 mini DisplayPort cables. You can do 4K 120Hz if you're using DisplayStream compression. Certain monitors like the Gigabyte M32U will let you do 4K 120Hz with DisplayStream compression. And then that monitor will work with garbage tier cables, which is fantastic. I really wanna emphasize that the standards committees, if you happen to be watching this, come up with like, you know, some sort of standard and make them put it on the cable to say this cable is certified for DisplayPort 2.180. And just call it that. This is a DisplayPort 2.154, DisplayPort 2.180. Like 2.1-80, 2.1-54. There, I did it for you. You're gonna save a lot of human suffering if you do that right now. And if you get a cable that's mini DisplayPort and it doesn't have those markings, it's garbage. So there you go, there's the W7800. Now, if you have one of these, or you have some applications you'd like to see me actually take a test drive with this, you're gonna have to come to the forum and hold my hand and tell me what your real world usage application is. I can run benchmarks on this, and this benchmarks like an amazing card with its 32 gigs of GDDR6. It is a compelling value based on the benchmarks, based on the OpenCL stuff. Everything that I can do on Linux with Rockham 6.3.1, tells me that this card is an incredible value at you know $2,300 versus the mm, $4,000-ish dollars equivalent from the competition, like three and a half, four thousand dollars $4,000. But if you use Revit all day or you use Blender all day and you've tried this card and you've suffered somehow, let's discuss in the forums, let's take it for another spin. Or especially if you try this on a, like a 6,000 series card, like a 6,800, I wonder what's improved from 6,800 to 7,800. You know how hard it is to get like <laughs> reviewer YouTube bozo copies of like Revit to just run stuff? They don't like handing those out. I'm one of those level one. I'm signing out. You can find me in the level one forums. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned something about DisplayPort 2.1, which is the thing that I'm excited about. All right, now here's some alternative intros.
12K, 120 hertz, but you need a special connector to do it. Full size display port ain't gonna do it, but this card has what we need. Let's take a closer look. <laughs> fail, fail, but this is the card that I need for 12K, 120 hertz. 12K, 120 hertz from this card in just 260 watts. AMD gets it done.